Welcome back. Now we want to take you to West Pokot County. Of course it is a county that many say once you hear the word Pokot you think my goodness of warriors and images of cattle rustling and all that. And of course the earliest time it came to the headlines was when Uganda President uh, Yoweri Museveni uh, spoke of cattle rustling there. In fact members of parliament from uh, West Pokot came out guns blazing saying you know what President Yoweri Museveni must apologize for undermining uh, the dignity of West Pokot. But we want to understand what does it mean to be there and now that we have a totally different government what's going to be the change? We're going to talk to Senator Professor John Lonyangapua. Professor John Lonyangapua is a professor of applied mathematics. Uh, he has lectured at the Egerton University. Uh, he has been a PS in the Ministry of Public Works, Ministry of Industrialization, and now honored to be the Senator of West Pocot County. Good to see you. Thank you so much indeed for coming. Thank you. For coming here on the Power Breakfast Show. Before we start, of course, last year you were a proud father. Your daughter actually topped the list as the best girl in KCSE. Yes, it was Chenanga. my honor. Awesome. And uh, a great reward from God for the commitment, maybe from my heart, that I've always invested in the people of Kenya, uh, going to, to about education, and in particular, the people of my county, West Pokot. Tell us your history briefly. When we, we are West Pokot, like he says, like Michoke called it, the axis of evil. We think West Pokot are just uh, cut rustlers. They're, they're How did, did it happen that you went to school and became a professor. professor? And are there other professors in West Pokot? Thank you, Muteki. Professor John Lonyangapuo was born there around 1963-64. We don't know the precise date. At a place called Kanyarkwat. Kanyarkwat is very close to the border of Kenya and Uganda neighboring Pukuo Kanyerus of Uganda. In 1972, up to when President Museveni came into power, chaos descended along our border because of what you know, we had a president who, who allowed civilians to have uh, uh, bad weapons in Uganda at that time, Idi Amin, Idi Amin. you remember? Yeah. And we became <coughs> casualties. By 1979, 80, when I was going to secondary school, the area was not governable. We, we moved from our homeland. When I just finished class 7 and went to Urtum secondary school, by foot because of the troubles that were there. So you gradually, with the troubles I'm talking about, if you can pick here, coming out of that scene, where the pocket of Kenya are attacked by the other colleagues from Uganda, their, their, their neighbors, those ones had guns, and these ones didn't. Yeah, it was chaotic. Were who? Yeah, of course, we had Sebeis and Karamojang of Uganda. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Slowly and surely, in, 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 in self-defense, somehow these others had came to come to own guns because your animals were being stolen before order was restored in Uganda, which took a long time. So you asked about me, I went to Ortum Secondary School from 1 to from 4, then I went to Seme School Yala in Nyanza, LFO, uh, from 5 and 6, and then went to each other university. And when through a tough time when, in 1984, there was the greatest ever conducted massive uh, operation on the local citizens of the Republic of Kenya by our government f because of catrasling. Our government at that time decided to do Operation West Pokot, and they did it ruthlessly because anybody who was a walking Pokot was affect, affected, including me. So all our animals were taken, and it made young men to resolve to start going into this kind of a petty crime because they said, if me, who was a law-abiding citizen, has been affected and nothing to use now, they went into this game now. But if you can recall now, our government has changed, changed eventually after that. They changed the, 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 op, the, the, changed the tactic of how to handle it. They decided to use now pe uh, the administration and talking to people rather than using force. Use force, you create force. 
So I went to L for finish from uh, went to high school, finish high school, went to university, finished university, became one of the top students, went to teach and became a principal of high school for one year. In uh, Pokot? In Pokot, yes, inside Pokot land, but at the border of Pokot and Maraguet, mm -hmm. a place called Leland Kaptapok. Then recalled to come to Hichaton because Hichaton was trying to create their own students to come and take over in future. The bright ones, I was among the six that were recalled for master's degree, full scholarship, and to become an assistant, uh, teaching assistant. Where I finished in 1993 and then became a lecturer. And 1995, went to UK for my PhD, 1999, came back home after my PhD in Applied Mathematics University of Leeds in UK. I came primarily because of the burden that was in my heart, that my people who are capable, if I was able to study in that circumstance, anybody in Bokodland and in pastoral region can go to school. I was given a job to teach in the University of Cambridge in 1999. And I said, no, I must go home to Pokodland. And came and taught in Ijaton. And then in the year 2002, the then president of the Republic of Kenya, who was a chancellor for all the universities, appointed me as the principal of the third principal of Kipkoilel campus of Mo University, the university that has now just become the University of Eldoret, the, the last one the, pre the president recently upgraded, where I was there for five years. And I began a program in Mo University called Academic Outreach Program, aiming at the pastoralists and Kenyans at large. These professors who are in the labs, who are in class, who are in the offices, can they come out and go and talk to the Kenyan populations in the villages? What is this you are a professor? And what is this that you are a, a professional? Can one become like you? Kenyans are very good at emulating other people. So we decided to create that movement. I became the patron. Every weekend I send professors to go out in the entire, they traverse the entire Rift Valley. All the way to tra from Transmara to Transoya, to Samburu land. And I concentrated more in Pokot because when I took over, there were 104 students scattered in the old universities in Kenya from Pokot community. Four were girls, 100 boys. And in the same university, I was 3,500 who are from Mukambani alone. 3,500 out of what? From Bakot, there were four in that university, mm -hmm. but entirely in all the public universities and private, total sum was 104. Mm -hmm. I said, no. We were born with an equal mind and equal heart and determination like other Kenyans. The same God who gave them brains, we also gave us. What is missing is somebody to tell them, we are able. We are able. And you have to lead by example. Well, looking at my background, the way it came, I saw anybody can do it. So I, when I began to tell my community, they listened. Pakot people are very good. They listen and they don't take an action. By the time they realized this man had an agenda, they started now taking their students to university. We started a program called Parallel Program in the universities where anybody with C plus, B minus, who could not access the funds given by help for fees, you can pay your direct, you, you sell your cows and so on and the kids come to school. Let me tell you by the time my term ended before I was appointed in the year 2008 as the first permanent secretary from that community by His Excellency Mikey Baki, we had a staggering over 2,000 students scattered all over in five years now, universities rising from four, 104, Perfect. and in five years, one year alone, spread from year one to year four, there were 2,000 plus. What does that tell Kenyans? Anybody is capable of doing anything given the right leadership. Absolutely. So this wrestling uh, feeling that uh, from seven, you told us you succeeded in convincing people to end wrestling. Why is it still there? Or is it still there? Or is it a perception? It is not a perception. Kenyans know for a mighty long time, in the, during that time I've just mentioned in the 70s, 80s, 90s, your newspapers were always plastered with a lot of cat wrestling activities. And so it is not a perception. It is still lingering. Nobody has rubbed. There's no rubber. 
that has been brought and removed from people's, from people's minds, that the, the scale of stealing you used to hear is no longer there. But the remark by His Excellency, the President of Uganda, was, 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 a, was a concern because it took him and his government a lot of time and resources to bring order at the border. Can you imagine that they are the only one in our border between Gaya and Uganda who have brought army and Yeshu and police and positioned them after every five kilometers? A post along our border. Then now, uh, when they disarm their people in, the, in their own country, they replace with a genuine employed officers to take care of them. In Kenya, we laxed. And that's why you still had a few uh, guns uh, in, the wrong, uh, in the hands of the people, but along the border. Not in the entire world, but I'm talking along, along the border and partly along the boundary between Bogota and Turkana. But the race is just there's no gun you'll walk and look for it you'll never see it so to me that concern was so genuine from a friendly country that feels the pinch and still felt it to that extent and he made that remark because his excellency the new president of the republic of kenya gave me the honor as the senate to receive honorable his excellency Museveni. So when he heard that we have a professor <laughs> from West Pokot who we know up to now, nobody has changed, nobody knows that they are educated people. You mean you have been elected? Then we are going to have a new scene and we are going to have our people going to school because we can mention that there is one there, please do, like that fellow. So it's out of that excitement, I believe, and in good faith, reminding the new government that we have a little problem at the border, assist this community called West Pakot and Turkana and others. He didn't mention the Turkana. We still have the same problem. But when he mentioned like that, it means any community still practicing that needs to be assisted. Right. J just a concern, because we saw um, members, of, uh, you know, members of parliament from Pokot South, Sigor and Kacheliba coming out and in fact demanding that uh, Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, apologizes do you think it has legitimacy? Personally, I think uh, my colleagues overreacted instead of, they would have even called me because I was the one who was with His Excellency to know what Muse has mentioned this. How do we react to this? Because I would have told them rather than going head on we use diplomatic means and take it as a genuine concern you can't wrap it and you cannot hide your head in the sand it is a problem you still hear a little bit of problem between Bokot and, 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 and Baringo you cannot come to defend a problem the problem the, 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 the issue they mentioned was maybe the whole sum of West Bogot 620,000 people were being condemned as thieves I don't think that was the connotation the president had in mind. He, he may have wanted to say a lit, some cut rustlers is not a community. But I look at it and say, I'm not going to hide because I am the leader. This problem exists. Can you help me? If, right. if they have uh, so just every 10 kilometers, the, the Ugandan, yeah. how is it that a court can penetrate the, the security, Ugandan security, to steal cows? Well, I, I wrestling in Uganda. There is no major wrestling still taking place now. Those years before they took that action in the last five years, before they implemented that seriously, it was there. And you know, five kilometers yes. is not, v is, is not very close, Bana. Yes. And at night, this guy is not how to... Like I mentioned, this is a closed place. Why would a, uh, a community that we knew had a problem for a long time, 50 years, not assisted as follows? Do you know there's no road network? You hear the ne nearest uh, noise, somebody has stolen my cows. The police can't move because there's no road network. So personally, I give credit to the other side of Uganda. They are doing, even now, a lot of roads are being done on their border, on the side of the border. As is a challenge for me, 
who is newly elected, and the challenge for the new government executive that has just been, been elected, I am sure with the leadership of our new president, he will listen to our problem. Mm. So personally, I look at uh, my colleagues, they came out of two, two, two fronts. One, with this name that had been condemned for a long time, they suddenly realize they are leaders and they have to defend the community. But to me, that would not have gone that way. We would have met, and uh, you, because this, this was not being directed at us, it was directed at the president, our newly elected government, we would have gone as leaders of West Pokot and sat with His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and tell him uh, we had this concern from our neighboring uh, country. It is true we need now support. Yeah, th th there's a bit of a concern. Of course, you're talking about coming up with a diplomatic solution. But according to the members of parliament, uh, the ones who came out, they're basically saying they were forced to come out in public because this is not the first time that uh, President Yoweri Museveni has actually uh, attacked the community. I want to hear when he last attacked. He didn't that there was a time when the late Lotodo mm -hmm. and President Moy was the president that time when the Pokot were, were called to come and entertain guests during one official uh, public, uh, public days in Kenya. And uh, uh, on, uh, the, His Excellency Museveni was a guest. When he saw the Pokot dancing, they said, yes, these are communities who have been giving me problems. <laughs> I've seen them today. You know, it was chaotic those days. It was bad. So he mended well that time. But the, the recent one, I don't think we should blow it out of proportion. Mm. Promotion, mm. Proportion. Mm. And we have more MPs in Pokot than the three. Mm. Why didn't we all come? <laughs> So I want to ask my colleagues to disarm their mentality. We finished elections on 4th of, May, of, of, of March. There is no longer Senator for Kanu, Lonyangapuo. There is no longer MPs for URP. We have also MP for Kanu. Why was he not called? So I'm calling generally to say, this is not a time to apportion blame. It's a time to all sit together as a team and present issues as a community. There is no credit and discrediting, and we are not in total competition. So I'm asking my colleagues, and uh, they are aware, we had mentioned that we are going for a retreat, and we are going for a retreat next weekend for bonding. We ask them that we have a senator and we have a governor. You never heard that the governor speaking, you never heard the senator speaking. It doesn't mean we were not hurt, but to just erupt means we may want to say we don't have cut wrestling. Last week there was cut wrestling where Turkana came to Pokot around the border and, Tur and Pokot also followed. What do you call that one? Mm -hmm. It's cut wrestling, isn't it? Yes. Yesterday there was again a problem in Baringo. What do you call it? Cut wrestling. <laughs> so there is no other dignified name for thieves along the border and those on internally in the border. And these are not, the community is just one thief. They are very few, very few. They are not even staying in their own homes. They have deserted homes. The only problem we have is ETC. It is in the mind where people say, cut wrestling, who is that? West Pokot. So I am here to say, what you knew about West Pokot, remove it. And that's what my colleagues m almost wanted to say. Please, we are not what you think we were. We are no longer that. Mm. How is it that... Um and where is it that they get guns from? How come West Pokot even children have guns? Young people have guns. I need, to, for seven. I need to know whether children have guns because I've never seen it. I, am, so I went to do election for the last yes. six months. I who, was, have, who has guns? I was making a remark to PS Engineer Kamau that on 4th of September last year, I bought brand new tires for my car. Yes. By December, I had changed them because there is no road. So you just passing through rocks and valleys, I never saw anybody with a gun. Leave alone a child. Now, your question is so genuine. How can you blame the holder of this one gun at the border of Pokot and Turkana when we, the Ghanaian government, have not installed our own security systems that work? The border for Kenya, 
and Somalia is very porous. That's where those things come from. Yeah. Ethiopia and Kenya, porous, and we have not secured the borders properly. You get those wrong things. Yeah. You also get Sudan, South Sudan, and Kenya. I am mentioning that Uganda, they have eliminated. I would go further to say, to ask this government, we follow what the Uganda people did. What harm is it when we put our, our, our army personnel, they have gone to bring order in Somalia. Can we now make sure that they have their own strategic stations along our border? And that's what our national anthem says, we need to secure our borders. How do you secure our borders if we don't do that? We, because you remove today, the way we are, they let Michuki did, they went and harvested all guns, and they didn't remove, and they removed from Turkana. But you have not removed from uh, those people in, 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 in Ethiopia because they sell or they come to raid. When they come to raid you, you have to, to, raid, to equip yourself to fight back. We will go around that thing until we do as follows. We put our security systems in order. If we don't have enough personnel, we upgrade what President, the late President uh, uh, um, Kenyatta, Chomo Kenyatta did, and, and the, the, the retired President Moy, and now the just retired President Kibaki. There's a group called KPR, Kenya Police Reserve, who are civilians, he is staying in the Manyatas, but the police train them, and their details are taken, even the bullets are given to them, and they are monitored how they use it. Because of our inability to give, this, the, to give our security system, we use them, but we on, we now pay them salary. Because how can you carry that weapon which is <laughs> life or death <laughs> for all these years? Genuinely, no maize for your family, no, no nothing. Me, I would recommend we pay anything between 2,000 and 5,000 shillings per month. And then now we, 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 we get to know them, re register them all the way from Kanyerus to, to Nauyopong, from Nauyopong to Kainuk, do the same to Turkana, do the same to Kot, Samburu, Baringo. Any loose bullet you find, you must trace it to the gun that came. Then you can now remove all these illegal guns. This is the gist of the matter. You can bury your head in the sun as a government, you have to remove that head. You can bury your head as a leader from Bokot, sorry, remove it. We have to face it as such. And then following number two, infrastructure. I've just been elected the, 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 the senator. There are committees of senate that are there. I will be asking my colleagues that I chair one of the following committees. Either the Committee on Infrastructure, which has roads, public works, etc., or that one of security, or that one of education. And if I chair the other ones, I must sit in the other one, because from my mind, I know what this pastoral is to want. It's not only Pokot, all the way from Marsapit, all through. So I'm saying, it is our weakness. We continue treating these uh, this, this symptoms. Yeah, where is the genuine problem? Our borders are porous. Can we wake up for once and stop them? And then we can do it by using our people. Our people have worked well. The, the KPRs have worked very well. There are some people, you call them, who work with the chiefs, the advisors of the chiefs. Those are the ones you can also use, mm. and it has worked before. Right. Just talking about uh, perhaps the beauty of this county that perhaps for a very long time it has sort of been forgotten. Geologists, in fact, estimate that there are over 30 different types of minerals. And uh, the concern is West Pokot is still ranked number 38 out of the 47 counties in terms of poverty. Exactly. To be precise, 32 types of minerals have been discovered. The leading county in the Republic of Kenya with the highest deposit of different types of minerals including cramite, cram, cramite and copper is West Pokot County. What does that mean? Vision 2030. Do you want to be achieved? Yes, all roads must lead to West Pokot in an organized manner so that we get investors going there. And no investor can go walking with this money with that perception that West Pokot is wild. We must provide security and provide very fast an infrastructure and the education must be rubber stamped. I have a very simple idea. Education is the permanent solution to remove this. I've said every border point of Pokot and Turkana planned a primary school that is boarding. People who are pastoralists give birth to their children and deposit them in school, boys and girls. 
government. Kwani, how much does it cost for you to feed these guys for the next five, ten years? You create a generation that is cattle free, that is cattle free, stealing <laughs> from their mind. And then they, the parents now begin to change the way life of uh, their, their, their lifestyle. Me, my father, and my siblings can no longer steal because they see a learned man here who has brought change. It is for that reason that my community em, em, endowed and em, empowered me to take over the mantle of leadership because they have seen I have an idea whose time has just arrived. So I'm saying we need to move and tap those resources. And you can only tap when the three pillars are upright. Social pillar. Social pillar. Did you know that the most disorderly pillar in West Pokot is a social pillar? Schools are not adequate. Although we became top two last year, KCAC from four, the county that was number two was West Pokot. What story does it tell you that the giant has woken up from slumber? And there's a few of us, plus the MBs you saw, who have gone around and told our people it's our time to wake up. Nobody else can come and assist us. I'm asking the new government to give us the empowerment. That is the support by listening to what we are saying. We build schools, and the schools have to be stocked with teachers. Although we became number two, we have over 400 primary and secondary school teachers missing. We don't have them. The TSC says when we get teachers. Primary schools, we became number nine in the whole country last year, out of 47 counties. Yet we have a deficiency of 1,420 teachers in the whole county. Who is then teaching our children? It is me who goes to class. It is anybody who has finished class from four and you are at home, please go and rescue your brethren without any salary. So you find people teaching half as sadly, but somehow God harnessed Hannah is that to become what, what has come. So to me, I find that our economy, our, our political pillar now, to me, the top must assist us. We are new and we are capable of doing what is in our hearts. Three, and lastly, we have the economic pillar, which you have just mentioned. Agriculture and livestock. West Pokot is divided into two climates. 80% of West Pokot County is dry, dry area while 20% in the hills of Leland, Pakot South, and Kapenguria is genuinely green, even better than Liburu. But we haven't tapped into agriculture properly. So I'm saying we are going to do massive irrigation in these lands so that the pastoralists who can now settle down. But who will do it? I have to work closely as a senator to get funding here. When we talk about minimum 15%, I want 20% or more because I have not been given a, mark, a close I've just been told not to come below 15%. So in order to eliminate this 38, number 38, and move West Pokot to top five, because of the inert resources that have not been tapped, we need to open up the infrastructure. Power, take it there. Water and sanitation, take it there. Healthcare, improve on it. Because you find we still jam Eldoret, Moy Teaching a River Hospital, as the only hospital where we go, you go in and, and be healed and come back. Yet Kapenguria Hospital should be quickly upgraded. Just like I also imagine the other 46 <coughs> counties must have their uh, county hospitals <coughs> status or river hospital. This is what is in me. Are there people who are mining there? <coughs> there, uh, there was a time when I heard there was some mercenaries or some people, I think South Africans called Branch Energy, who are mining there illegally. For the time I've been there, I've not seen any foreigner mining. Maybe those were those early days yes. when we were still in school or we were, when we had other leaders. Today, together with the governor and the new leaders you saw, we have given a degree and we started by stopping all the limestone when I was the peers in the Toronto. Stop it. We cannot ferry our raw materials to Uganda mm -hmm. for processing unless you come and pull the, pull the, <coughs> the factory right there. So we are saying the time has now come when we have people who are knowledgeable with these matters that we must process there to create jobs and also lift up the economy of, of the place. You heard about the factory that's about to, st to take place, the, the cement plant in North 2, mm. delayed because of petty politics. Who is the one that was driving this matter? A PS called Professor Lonyangapu. We stagnate him. That was not me. It was supposed to open up the place. 
So now that we are on the scene and the people have given us the mandate, we have asked the investor to quickly come and start this process. If it's defeated, we go to phase two where we get another one who is willing to come and invest and move in very fast. But he cannot come until we have a sufficient power to be taken there. Yet we have Ken Chen at Takwell. The power has not been brought. So in my tenure as the senator and uh, my, peop my colleagues on the ground, we are going to make sure that the power is utilized. We are the ones generating the power and we must utilize it to open up the place. Mm, all right. Of course, just a perhaps a final remark. Um, you'll be working with other elected leaders, including the governor, West Pokot County, uh, Simon Kachapin, and he once termed West Pokot as a gem that waits to be turned into an asset. What is your final word in regards to the future of West Pokot? My, future, my, my final uh, word is uh, what the governors did say, Honorable Kachapin, West Pokot is a jewel that has not been done. West Pokot County is like a sack full of gold, and a beggar is sitting on it not knowing <laughs> this is gold. there is gold. I want to ask Kenyans, sincerely and genuinely, and our neighbors in Uganda, Sudan, Ethiopia, this community called Pokot are like any other community, so genuine in our desire to wake up like everybody else that we need your support. I want to welcome anybody who wants to be a visitor of Pokot. I am like the public relations officer of the county and my, 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 my brother on the ground will be working to make sure that if you are an investor who has come, go and see the governor and the team. And we are also join hands with the MPs and I've asked them that we need to work together irrespective of your political affiliations. Those things died on foot. So, I, uh, we are seeing a brand new Spokot where you are going to be seeking, other counties are going to be seeking for advice and how to tap their resources in the future. Here we are, genuine servants elected by the people. All right. Brand new Pokot, all roads lead to West Pokot. From today. Amazing. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Talking to Professor John Lonyangapur, Senator, West Pokot County. It's been a great honor actually serving you today. Many thanks. We wish you all the best. A wonderful weekend. I'm Johnson Mokazi. And I'm Tanjao. And he's Professor, Professor John Bonyangapur. All, right. all the best. Mm -hmm.